Hi everyone, I'm Singai Shu, Steinway artist in New York City, and I am so excited to be talking with the dean of my school days at Yale, Dean Robert Blocker. You have made Yale School of Music such a wonderful place for musicians of all nationalities, and I'm just so excited to be talking with you and catching up today. It was great to see you, Singai, and I remember with great fondness when you were a student, I know it was only last year, of course. <laughs> Congratulations on all that you've been doing to build cultural bridges in China. The tour to China, to Beijing and Shanghai, I heard it was just wonderful. Well, thanks. Um, as you know, um, China holds a very, very dear place in my heart. This goes back to the time I was a child and um, the uh, church sponsorship for Lottie Moon. And that was my first real live acquaintance with China. You know, through my elementary schooling um, in public schools in Charleston, South Carolina, it was also fate that I had a teacher whose sister was in China. And I became really, really curious about this country where, uh, you know, um, there were so many people and we seem to have so many commonalities, and yet we seem to have so many differences. I wanted to learn about it. And so I was able to learn because of um, spending a lot of time in the library, reading and mainly looking at the, at the pictures. So when I was able to finally go to the Far East in the late eighties for the first time, it was really thrilling. That's wonderful. You know, talking about missionaries, my grandfather became a Christian through missionaries. Uh -huh. And my father and my uncle, who was my piano teacher, they grew up singing hymns because they had a little old upright. Uh, and this was all done in secret. Of course. One of the things that I know you're doing with Yale China is to try to provide a forum where people of Chinese descent and others too can find a place of, um, I would call it emotional wellness and belonging. It's um, a stressful time for many people. It's a time that causes incredible pain. It is a dark side of humanity that um, I've never seen before. I mean, the, the idea that uh, some unknown person for no reason at all just randomly takes a hammer and starts beating on a Chinese woman on the street, streets of New York are people stand inside a building and watch an attack take place and don't do anything about it. I mean, this tells me things about the human condition that I thought I would never have to confront. So what you're doing uh, to offer <clears throat> this kind of, of musical um, support is really important. And I wanted to thank you for it. Uh, and I think you'll find that other people will find that it's important too and hopefully it's going to provide bridges for a lot of people. Uh, I, I really hope that it gives people the space to slow down and think about things. I think right now we all feel the intensity and the urgency of all these situations building and we haven't even figured out how to kind of confront the reality yet and there's just so there's so much out there to uh, respond to. And yet I think what music allows me to do is to slow down and, and process before making big decisions. The important thing in this is for people to have the support and the encouragement that gives them the courage to be who they are. Um, we, in many instances, have to feel that within ourselves first before we can feel that we belong somewhere else. We have to belong to ourselves, you know, and that's a hard journey. That, that's a really tough journey for anybody. The unfortunate place where we are now is that we're unable to hear what people say. And, uh, you know, what you're providing through Yale China and, uh, and in other work that you're doing, which I'm really proud of, of you personally using your talent this way is another opportunity for people in another place in their life to just slow down and make sense of things. Mm -hmm. What is it that my heart is telling me when I hear this music? What is it that my mind is telling me? 
uh, how does this music help my heart speak to my mind? To sort, you know, to make sense of things is really, really critical in our lives today. Definitely. And speaking of sorting, oftentimes in the news you hear about the word China being used, and it's really confusing because you think of China as being like one entity, whereas it really is the Chinese government, there's the Chinese people, there's Chinese history. I mean, there's so many things that's being simplified into just China, and it's hurting our identity as Chinese Americans who love our country of America, who want to contribute here. We are the artists who want our artistic freedom, who who want to do science and research and uh, restaurant owners and all these people that's, that's more American fabric, more American people than it is a foreign Chinese government. And as our tensions get worse, <laughs> right now as the trade deficit is growing and there's all these threats and Chinese rocket falling from the sky. I feel like it's really important for us as a nation to make that clear sort sorting <laughs> of what are we talking about when we say Chinese? Yeah, the way to, to build a respect of different cultures is not any different from building a respect for um, two grandmothers who are in your family and they have completely different views about how they dress, how anybody should dress, how to eat, what faith is. It comes down to this uh, willingness to try to understand each other and, uh, and to be civil toward each other. Yeah. And, and um, you know, I think it, it's going to be a lifetime process for everybody, your children, my grandchildren, this is not something you cure because we have proof that civilization has never cured it. And I think our nation, among others, there are others, has ignored it. And I think we've had leaders that have enjoyed exacerbating it. Normally, I don't jump into political waters, but when you have somebody who's removed from a leadership post, a woman whose father served as vice president of the nation, and who says, I'm not going to lie, and the film is sitting up here of her colleagues who have lied. You can watch it. Telling the truth and having integrity is um, what preserves cultures. Uh, for artists like you, like me, like Dan, like others, our job is to point a way to uh, the future. I think this is our job through uncharted territory, through our own imaginations, through our souls that we can provide something for people to hold on to, to reflect in a way that they find their own compass and their own pathway. Absolutely, absolutely to process and then to go beyond and create something new. What can the listener who's gonna come in on this Yale China series for you, what can they expect? What's the homework you want them to know about? <laughs> The word that I want to take out of that is work. <laughs> okay. All right. I certainly realize that Chinese American, I want to do things right. I want to do it well, you know, and all that. And um, this is more of a time to explore. Mm -hmm. And I think it really is hard to just kind of put down your expectations of yourself and be able to have fun and play around with yeah. sound. And I just want to share some of the music that I really enjoyed playing around in my head and see where it opens up places of feeling, um, of expression. And then I also want to tag in little tidbits of just cultural observations I notice about myself, about my family, um, about our interactions as Chinese Americans in the community and have a little call of action and how we might be able to um, contribute, form friendships or, or deepen relationships with the people around us. That so opportunity that. to hear and to feel and to learn from each other is extraordinary when we allow ourselves to be open that way. Mm -hmm. And this is the opportunity you're giving us. So I know it's gonna be really successful and I'll look forward to the next chapter. 
Well, thank you very much. It's great. Thanks to see so you. much, Singai. Good to see you.